we started to look at the phase lock loop which is used to multiply up uh, frequencies to generate a high frequency periodic signal. The problem is that we would like to generate a high frequency periodic signal which is very precise in the sense its frequency should be accurately known, right. But uh, all of the on-chip oscillators have so much process variation that and by variation with temperature and voltage and so on that we really cannot use them as is, right. So, there is a set of oscillators usually uh, made using quartz crystals whose frequencies are very accurately defined. So, we use that and then make uh, uh, use a phase lock loop to multiply up the frequency. Okay? So, the structure looks like uh, looks similar to the uh, phase lock loop we used in a clock and data recovery circuit. have a crystal oscillator which generates what is known as a reference. This signal is called the reference signal and this is typically in the tens of megahertz. It can also be at uh, much lower frequencies. For instance, usually the crystal oscillators used in a watch are at 32.768 kilohertz. Okay? And we use a phase detector. phase detector output uh, drives a charge pump. You are already familiar with this structure and a loop filter. This drives a VCO because the VCO at some multiple of uh, VCO should be some n times the input reference frequency. We divide the VCO frequency by n before comparing. Okay. So, the difference between uh, a CDR a clock and data recovery circuit and a PLL used for a synthesizer, but uh, that is used only for generating a periodic signal is that the input here is random data, whereas this is a periodic reference. The input here is at the output frequency, right, in general, whereas the input here is at 1 by n times the output frequency, okay. And also, in a CDR, you are interested in uh, the VCO following the input jitter and so on. Here, that may not be of much interest. You may just want a very clean periodic signal uh, that does not jitter even if the reference jitters. Okay. The role of all these components remains the same. Again, we will make the small signal model and analyze it, but basically this capacitor will eventually in steady state hold the voltage that is required to bring the VCO and then any instantaneous changes that are required will be produced by the voltage across the resistor. Okay? So, in that respect it is the same. So, this phase detector, this is slightly different from what we use for uh, uh, what we used in case of the clock and data recovery circuit. There we were looking at phase difference between some random data and a periodic clock. Here we are looking at phase difference between two periodic signals. Okay? the reference signal and the feedback signal. Okay. Now, there are a number of uh, types of uh, phase detectors which are used one of the analog type of phase detectors is a multiplier. The idea here is that you have two periodic signals at the same frequency and you multiply and average 
what is the what will be the low frequency content of this cos of phi minus theta no no forget the proportionality constant oh is it yeah it is i think so let me make this uh, sign okay then what do you get yeah sign of uh, phi minus theta which i mean for small phase differences is just the phase difference itself so you get <coughs> basically some measure of phase and you can also use an xor gate if you define the xor gate with uh, instead of 0 and 1 minus 1 as low and plus 1 as high if you define it like that the xor gate and multiplier are the same thing okay basically the xor gate will be the sign of the first signal times the sign you know what this means right it is plus 1 for positive numbers and minus 1 for negative numbers and if you look at the average of this it will in fact be proportional to phi minus theta okay all this you can draw the waveforms or uh, work out yourself and then i'm not going to use these things anyhow now one of the problems with uh, these types of uh, phase detectors is that these are sensitive to waveform shape okay for instance the xor gate uh, it assumes that the two inputs are uh, two inputs have 50 percent duty cycle okay the square waves with 50 percent duty cycle then you get phi minus theta otherwise you will get some offset okay uh, whereas we do not want that we cannot guarantee that the uh, either of the inputs will be 50 percent and in fact sometimes you cannot have 50 percent for instance if you have uh, like let me just say okay this is what happens uh, in fact it is not possible to have 50 percent duty cycle <coughs> because we have a frequency divider how do you make a frequency divider if i have uh, if i have some uh, periodic signal at some frequency and i want 1 by n of that frequency how do i do that no no that's okay i'm not looking at the circuit like what is that thing called like what is it the what is the function it's a counter basically you count a certain number of pulses until the cycle finishes and then you reset and so on so, and if you look at the output waveform, it will be high for a certain number of cycles and low for a certain other number of cycles. So, if the division modulus is odd, right, if the division modulus n is odd, you cannot have 50 percent duty cycle, right, because the output will be high for some integer number of cycles and then low for another integer number of cycles. You cannot have these two to be equal when you have an odd total, when you then the total is an odd number. So, you cannot guarantee 50 percent duty cycle. And finally, basically. Uh, while these are okay and these are sometimes used at high frequencies because you can't make anything more complicated uh, like i've always said you can do phase measurement only at the edges so you want a circuit that is sensitive only to edges let's say rising edges so when i want to find the phase difference between this signal and that signal what i really mean is i need an output that is related to the time difference between the rising edge of this reference signal and rising edge of the feedback signal okay so we prefer to have a 
net sensitive phase detector ok. And this one I will uh, just show. So, let us say the reference signal is like this and the feedback signal I will show it as lagging. Okay. Now, uh, there is a circuit which works this way that at the rising edge of the reference, the output should go high and at the rising edge of the feedback it goes to 0 and so on. So, at the rising edge of the reference it goes high, goes back to 0, right. So, clearly now, if this is the output, what is the average value? If this phase difference is phi, what is the average value of this? Yeah, so let us say the amplitude this is just 1, phi by 2 pi. Basically, it is high for a duration of phi, I mean, in terms of phase 2 pi, uh, I mean, phi radians, and then it is low for 2 pi minus phi radians. So, because the full cycle is 2 pi, the average value is phi by mm, 2 pi. Now, how would you make a circuit like this? Response to the edges. I mean, first of all, because it responds to the edges, you get the idea that it is a when it uses flip flops with uh, the input and feedback, which are going to some flip flops. Okay, and the one of the common realizations is this. I will call the signals A and B that is I want to find the phase difference between rising edges of A and B. If it is falling edges, you use falling edge trigger flip flops that is all. Okay. And I have two flip flops and the D input of uh, both flip flops is let us say connected to 1. Okay. Now, what happens is assuming that we start from a reset state at the rising edge of A, this uh, let me call this Q A and Q B at the rising edge of A, Q A becomes 1 and at the rising edge of B, Q B becomes 1. Okay. Now, what is also done is these flip flops have a reset input. Okay. And if Q A and Q B are simultaneously high, the flip flops are reset. Okay. So, please sketch Q A and Q B when A and B are like this and assume that before we start the flip flops are reset that is Q A and Q B are both 0 okay. and let us say this phase difference is phi and similarly the second case where
So, what happens here in the first case assuming that the flow q a and q b were both 0 initially what happens here q a will go high at the rising edge of a and q b will go high at the rising edge of b, but of course, at this point both a and b are simultaneously high. So, both a and b are immediately pulled to 0. Okay. So, q a will be a pulse train whose width equals the phase difference and q b will be I mean in uh, if everything is ideal with uh, 0 rise time it will just be a sliver which goes and immediately jumps down. In reality of course, it will be a small pulse okay. and the average here of uh, let us say we take q a minus q b as the signal the average here is phi by 2 pi. Okay. And in the other case, so let me use some other uh, symbol for this. Uh, again, a like q a and q b are initially reset. So here, q b first goes high, and then q a goes high, and pulls both of them down. Okay. And what will be the average of q a minus q b? It is minus theta by 2 pi. Now, what is the difference between these two cases? Huh? No, they are not different frequencies for sure, they are the same frequency. Yeah, but how do you tell like which is lying and which is leading? You have periodic signals. You actually cannot tell, right? I mean, it is not a problem with this phase detector, but uh, if you say B lags A by phi, I can equally well say A lags B by 2 pi minus phi, right? It is exactly the same. So, there is that inherent ambiguity, and that is what is shown here. So, I mean, I did not draw it uh, to scale, but it could be that this theta equals 2 pi minus phi for the same input signals uh, you will have different behavior, but that is ok that does not matter as it turns out. Again this has got nothing to do with uh, any uh, particular feature of this phase detector there is an inher inherent ambiguity in the phase. So, let us uh, study this a little further. So, when you have a, a circuit with flip flops you can draw a state diagram and let us say the states are q a q b is the state. Okay. Then both can be 0 right and q a can be 1 and q b can be 0 and q b can be 1 and q a can be 0. Okay. Now, both being simultaneously 1 I mean that is not uh, as prohibited in this case, because what the moment become they become simultaneously 1 they will immediately jump to being simultaneously 0 right because of this reset. Now, what happens is when uh, you are in state 0 0 that is both these are 0 okay. when you get a rising edge of a it jumps to this state I mean in the normal state diagram you have some input and a fixed clock whereas here the clock itself is like the input. So, that is why the state transition uh, paths have rising edges of uh, these things okay. and let us say if you are in the state 1 0 okay, and you get another rising edge of A what happens. Huh? 
it stays in the same thing because this was one and then the input is one you get another rising head it will simply get another one that is all. So, it will get out of this only if it receives a rising edge of B okay. <coughs> and from state 0 0 if it gets a rising edge of B it goes to state 0 1. And in 0 1 it gets another rising edge of B it continues to be in this state and if it gets a rising edge of A it comes back to the other state. Okay. So, this is the state transition diagram. Now, if A and B are periodic signals at the same frequency depending on the initial state it could be going between then it will just cycle between depending on how it starts right. If you first get the rising edge of B then it goes between 0 0 and 0 1 if you first get the rising edge of A it goes between uh, 0 0 and 1 0. Okay. So, will this uh, is this phase detector actually useful looks like for the same input it gives two possible different outputs. So, for that uh, what I suggest you do is please plot average of uh, q a minus q b. versus the input phase phi and what is phi basically I will say that B lags A by phi. Okay. And initially let us assume that it is uh, cycling between the states 0 0 and 1 0. Okay. So, what I want you to do is the following you imagine that like uh, phi is some small value let us say somewhere here initially and then it gives you some output average and then you slowly increase phi slowly increase phi meaning you make the uh, rising edge of B come a little bit later okay? that is like increasing phi right. So, initially perhaps A and B are like this and this is phi and then at this point you increment the phi a little bit okay? and you plot it for a new value of phi. So, as phi goes on increasing you plot it and see what happens okay? and plot it for a range from 0 to 4 pi okay? that is B goes through like two cycles of A. So, first let us say you start with a small positive value of phi and then uh, I also said it is cycling between 0 0 and 1 0. So, the average of q a minus q b will be positive. Now, as you keep on uh, increasing phi the output will go on increasing at some point basically you reach a state like this where the phase difference is almost 2 pi. Okay. Then q a will be almost always high and then there is a small. So, it goes up to this point where the output is nearly 1 okay. and when it reaches 2 pi it will be 1, but then if uh, this b slides over to the right by a little bit then It's like having this again. Okay, so in the middle, in one of the cycles, there may be something weird happening. Otherwise, you will again start getting 
like very small pulses corresponding to the difference between this and that. Okay. So, after 2 pi it falls back to 0 and then it starts increasing again. Okay. Right. Now, the question is what happens let us say you are here and then it comes back. So, let us say the picture is like this right that is uh, this is a and b and b lags a by just a small amount okay. and in the next cycle I mean it starts doing that then b leads a and then after that it keeps doing this right. This is basically so what happens then oh yeah basically it goes to this other state right because you get a rising edge of b before so if you do this it continues back that way okay and then similarly in this direction it goes that way and similarly the same thing here if you are here at a small phase difference and <coughs> you will go on reducing the phase lag it goes in the negative direction. Okay. The whole thing is like completely repeated every 2 pi, okay, which is what you expect. In fact, phase has this modulo 2 pi behavior, right? you cannot distinguish between phi and phi plus 2 pi and so on. So, if you go on increasing phase, it goes like that. If you go on decreasing, if you go on slowly uh, increasing the lag, or increasing the lead uh, b versus a it goes like that and in the other direction it would have gone like this. Okay. So, this is what it does it has this hysteresis and so on, but that is okay. the important thing is that in uh, regardless of which state it is in first of all you can't distinguish between 0 and 2 pi and minus 2 pi and so on that's what you expect right uh, even by looking at the waveform you can't distinguish uh, if you are uh, leading by if you are lagging by 2 pi plus phi or just phi it is the same thing isn't it so that's what is shown in the picture here and in general any phase detector will have a plot like this which keeps repeating okay depending on the number of states in the phase detector uh, like how far it goes before repeating may change but it will repeat Okay. it will have this type of uh, <coughs> behavior and uh, the thing is regardless of where you are on this graph right if you increase the lag of b with respect to a the output will only increase right because the slope of these lines is always positive so if b is lagging by let's say 1 degree and then it lags by 2 degrees the output will be increasing okay so it could be that when b is lagging by 1 degree it is there and by 2 degrees it goes there or when b is lagging by 1 degree it is here and it goes there in either case the output value the average value of q a minus q b only increases this is important because we will use this in a negative feedback loop and the loop has to work correctly because if you have cases where if uh, the phase is increasing and the output is decreasing or phase is increasing and the output is increasing then you do not know i mean you could have a positive feedback type situation right so, in this case that does not happen the output always increases as lag increases, but you could the actual value can be different. Okay. Is this fine? So, this is the classic characteristic of the phase detector that you see. <coughs> so, instead of q a and q b I may as well call this up and down because essentially what happens is if this feedback signal here is lagging the reference I should have more up pulses. So, that the V c o goes to a higher frequency essentially it pulls it back right it uh, starts making the V c o phase uh, lead whatever it was earlier. So, if uh, f f leads f b 
we will have more up pulses and then it will make pull the VCO edges to the left and if F f uh, lags F b, then we will have more down pulses and then it will let the VCO slide to the right, VCO edges slide to the right. Okay. So, the circuit we have is this and this part is exactly the same from Q a and Q b we will operate two switches. Okay. So, this is the phase detector, this is the charge pump and that is the loop filter. Okay, this is fine. What is the average current output of the phase detector? Sorry, yeah, like as a function of the phase difference between A and B, what is it? Yeah, it is just I C P by 2 pi times the phase, right. So, that I have assumed that we are in in writing that expression I assume that we are in this part of the characteristic. Okay. So, that is fine. So, basically we get a gain of uh, I C P by 2 pi this is okay. Now, we will uh, study this in detail there are some issues that would not occur in the C D R that we have to concern ourselves with here, but before we go there. What happens in this case when the frequency of A is let us say slightly higher than the frequency of B? There are different frequencies. The frequency of A is uh, slightly higher than the frequency of B. What will happen? Huh? Really? How much can be the maximum average? Or okay, first look at the state diagram and tell me where in the state diagram it will be. It may start from some arbitrary state, but uh, frequency of A is slightly higher than the frequency of B. So, where is it going to be on the state diagram? It will be same as what? So, it can be go either between state 0 0 and 1 0 or state 0 0 and 0 1. Yeah, you disagree, huh? One zero. Why? Yeah. So it doesn't matter how you start off, right? So there are more edges of A in a given time than edges of B. So eventually, you may start off with state zero one. That is okay. Okay, it may be going between state zero one and zero zero because you are getting alternate edges of B first A and X and so on. But because the frequency of A is higher. There will always be some point where within one cycle of B, you will get two edges of A. Okay. The moment you get two edges of A, wherever you are, even if you are here, you will end up there. After that, you will only get like uh, either uh, A B A B A B or A A, right. So, that is the only pattern that is possible, right. You will not get two edges of B before you get an edge of A, that is not possible because the frequency of A is higher than B. So, even if you start here, it will always come back to that one. Okay. So, if the frequency of A is higher than the frequency of B, eventually end up cycling between states 0 0 and 0 1. Okay. And similarly, if the frequency of A is lower than the frequency of B, you wherever you start off with, you will end up cycling between state 0 0 and 0 1. Okay. This is okay. So, what will be the average value of Q a minus Q b if uh, frequency of a is higher than frequency of b? Yeah, so what is the average value? The long term average.
So, imagine that the period of A is 1 percent longer than the period of uh, sorry period of B is 1 percent longer than the period of A. Okay, the frequency of A is 1 percent higher than the uh, frequency of B. So, what happens is in every cycle uh, the edge of B comes 1 percent later like 100 3.6 degrees later right. First it may be 3.6 then 7.2 and so on. So, what will be the output of uh, what will be the output Q A? Let us say it has started cycling between state 0 0 and 0 1. What will the output of Q A look like? Increasing pulse width. In the first time they may it is 3.6 degrees wide, next time 7.2, next time 10.8 and so on. So, it will keep on happening until it reaches almost the full width and then it falls back to 3.6 degrees. What will be the average of this? Half. No, it is half that is all. So, if uh, the output Q A is going between 0 and 1, the average of this will be half. Okay. So, this also detects frequency. What I want to point out is for instance, let us say you take a multiplier type phase detector. Okay. So, instead of uh, these two being at the same frequency, this was at omega 1 and this was at omega 2, what would be the average of the product? you multiply two sine waves of different frequencies, what will be the average of the product? Zero, right? I mean, basically, if you have two different frequencies, the average will be zero. Okay. I mean, the low frequency component will be omega one minus omega two, but the average of that is also. I mean, it will be a sinusoid at omega one minus omega two. The average will be zero. Similarly, in the XOR phase detector if the two frequencies are different the average will be 0. Whereas, in our case at least we have a better situation in that if a frequency of A is higher than frequency of B the average is half. So, the frequencies are different it will definitely send it in a particular direction. Okay. Another way to imagine that is if the frequencies are different phi versus t will be like this right, it will just be a ramp. This is basically b lags a by phi and phi goes on increasing with time. Now, our phase detector does not respond like this right, I mean once it goes beyond 2 pi what it does is it just folds back to 0. It responds to the same thing modulo 2 pi. So, you can see the average of this is for 2 pi you would have got an output of 1. Now, we get our output between 0 and 1. So, the average of this will be half. Okay. And similarly, minus half if f a is smaller than f b. Okay. <coughs> so, that is why this circuit that we discussed, it is called uh, many times it is called the uh, phase frequency detector. Okay. So, if the frequencies are different, it definitely it gives you a definite signal that they are different, right. The average will be either half or minus half. And because it has three states, many times it is called the three state phase frequency detector. Okay. This is fine. So, this is I think the circuit that is most commonly used in any PLL, okay, this type of phase detector for a number of reasons. Now, one of the important things is that so eventually what will be the so let us say you have this phase detector like this, the we use the three state PFD, right. Now, if you let this loop run for a long time and reach steady state what will be the phase of the feedback signal compared to the phase of the reference signal? What will it be? It has to be the same, otherwise either up or down will be active and it will keep changing the VCO signal. Now, if the two phases are the same, what are the what is the average of uh, average difference between up and down or in fact, what will be up and down individually in our case?
if the phase difference is 0, what will be the each of ideally if there is no rise time at all, if there is 0 rise time up and down will be individually 0. I mean in reality it will be a small pulse. So, actually so that means that when this is properly aligned with and the feedback is properly aligned with the reference, it turns off the charge pump. In fact, it is doing the right thing, it is not disturbing the control voltage at all, right. So, when it turns off the charge pump, the noise from the charge pump and all these things uh, become uh, very little, I mean uh, basically the con their contribution becomes very small, ok. So, ideally if these two keep perfect phase alignment, then there is no current flowing at all into the loop filter and uh, the VCO is held at a control voltage that gives you the right frequency. Of course, in reality as time goes on this will the VCO characteristic will drift or something else will happen. So, you have to keep periodically updating it, but as long as the phase difference is small these switches are on for a very short time. So, that will uh, uh, give you basically a low noise performance ok. That is why this type of uh, uh, phase detector is very popular when you want to make a frequency synthesizer. Okay, when you want to make a frequency synthesizer, you want a periodic signal, right? That is, if you have a VCO, ideally you would like to set the control voltage to that magical value, which gives you, let's say, 10 gigahertz, and keep it there and never disturb it. In reality, you have to keep periodically updating it. But when you update, you should have as little disturbance as possible because any change to the control voltage actually changes the frequency of the VCO. Okay. Any questions about this? Yeah, in a bang bang CDR. No, in a bang bang CDR, that is the case because uh, in both cases, first of all, uh, with a linear phase detector, what happens is for just half a cycle, it will be at plus ICPR and the other half it is at minus ICPR. But that is so rapid, it does cause changes, it does cause disturbance to the uh, VCO, but it is so rapid that it does not matter. In a bang bang CDR also, I mean that is mainly because in a bang bang CDR it does not uh, say how much the phase difference is right. It only says it is either leading or lagging, whereas here this is a actually a linear phase detector. This tells also tells you how much it is leading or lagging. So, when uh, FRF and FB are aligned, this gives you both up and down to be 0 in uh, I mean everything is perfect, whereas there first of all they cannot be aligned like that in a bang bang loop. So, maybe in alternate cycles it will go back and forth and then the output of the bang bang phase detector will be either plus 1 or minus 1, it is not give, going to give you a small value. So, the, so there will be that chatter that would not be the case here. So, but if you do try to make a phase lock loop and there are attempts to do that with a bang bang uh, phase detector you will have the same problem. Any other questions? Okay, so we'll continue from there. 